My man's AD. What's up, gentlemen? Good morning, good morning, good morning. How y'all doing, man? Oh, uh, good morning. We're doing good at the Buffalo. It's going to be a tough game on Sunday. But, you know, we, you're not doing as good as you're doing in Houston right now uh, with, with those Houston Texans and the D'Amico Ryans and, and C.J. Stroud and Tank Dell and all those guys you highlighted in the preseason kind of finally coming to fruition. So, A.D., can you please tell us about those Houston Texans and uh, anything that surprised you or what can we expect moving forward from those boys? It was a huge game on Sunday. Uh, yeah, it's, it's absolutely a huge game, man. But you know what? Here's, here's the thing about the press conference we have Fridays with D'Amico Ryan. It's really not your typical presser. It's a, we just sort of like, you know how we like, like, like we meet up at the Super Bowl and we just sort of sitting around kicking it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what we do on Fridays with him. No, it's no cameras or nothing. You know, we can just sit back, everybody drop the hats and we can just, you know, shoot questions at him and back and forth and, it's nothing recorded, but you know, you, hey, remember, I got a, I'm sort of like I got a memory like an elephant. I can remember a lot of stuff, but it, it, it's unique in that way. But as far as the, the Texans and being, being surprised, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'll be quite candid with you. Uh, I am surprised, man. Um, I think that because the last two years you had fired, you had hired, hired and fired two coaches six, consecutively two years in a row, and all of a sudden this was your third hire. And uh, you got to be, you know, just be complete candid and, and full, full disclosure. Yeah, I was, I'm surprised. I'm surprised. But the thing about it, the, the draft picks, everything has worked out. You, you know that that old adage, "Next man up." Mm -hmm. That's that to me has been the big, the biggest surprise because the of the starting offensive line, the fight, the starting five that was projected has yet to hit the field. We have yet to have that 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 five starting offensive line yet to this this moment. There's only one guy, and and every and every week I just go by him and I say and I told him I say, well, if you got one more weekend, you know, Shaq Mason has been the only uh, projected offensive lineman that has started the whole season for the Houston Texans. Eric me, Larry Mitonsu, and and, um, and the, those guys, the guys that you anticipated, they have missed time. Everybody has missed time. Juice Rugs, the uh, the rookie, the the rookie out of uh, Penn State who was projected to start, he came, he he uh, got hurt during at the, at the beginning of the season. Then we got the young kid out of Notre Dame coming. He went down after the starting, so it's just been next man up and 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 so forth. Now, the guy who, and I think the guy who everybody I think has just been and, and overwhelmed with, and is C.J. Stroud. Make no mistake about it. <laughs> Nobody was expecting it. Nobody, I don't, I don't think nobody was expecting CJ Stroud to be the, you know, to be this type of. At this point of the season, what 17 touchdowns, only thrown five interceptions, and of those five, three were thrown last week in, in a in a win that the defense had to go ahead and, and and bring it bring it home, bring it across the finish line. You know, uh, you know, 62. He's hitting about almost 63 percent of his pass completion with a. With a quarterback rating at ninety nine point three as of today, as as it stands right wow. now. So, I mean, if you expected a rookie quarterback to come in and, and and the thing about it, he has locked in and 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 really when you think about it, and, I, and I'm gonna go back to those three interceptions last week. One one of them I know, and two of them went to the same receiver, but. You know, it was one of those routes that he it was an out route that the, that the DB stepped in and caught it on the out route. The other he was uh, going, and both of those particular interceptions was going to Nico Collins, who's probably the tallest receiver out of the group. Oh, yeah. And one of them was in the end zone, was in the red zone. And he and then really, it, instead of, you know, everybody, at least in my opinion, instead of throwing it more up to let, let either Nico was going to get it or nobody was going to get it, he threw it more on the line and the defensive back made, just made a good play on it. And the other one, just you know, it was just flat out his interception. But up until that point, this kid had only thrown two interceptions, guy. Now, mm -hmm. had it, had had there been other times when he had been lucky and the DB didn't hold on to the ball? Yeah, that's true. I mean, I'm just this just, just call it for what it's worth. But the thing about it, I'm, I mean, 17 touchdowns and only five interceptions. But you know, wow, but 17 now, touchdowns. Wait a minute, you said 17 touchdowns and five interceptions so far this season? Yeah, that's it. Is that what you said? Oh yeah. my god. Yep. Man, that's who's, exactly. this, who, who, who's this offensive coordinator there for the uh Houston Texans? 
Yeah, it's not the one y'all. It's not the one y'all just fired. That's for dirt. <laughs> hey, we got shot today. Dirt, oh man, it wasn't Dorsey. It wasn't. <laughs> I saw, hey man, hey, wait a minute, hey, wait, you, George, you know I had to, I had to send you. You know when they, when after after watching that Bills game. And I when they looked out there and they had twelve men on the field and I'm going then the next day I went like, you know I, I think I sent you a text I said you did wait a minute I said wait a minute is the offensive coordinator in charge of special team right. I mean I I just wanted to know I just I just I didn't realize that you fired the offensive coordinator with the special team coach and mm. you know give him one more one more time man right <laughs> I remember you said that early that next morning I. I was laughing. I said, "Oh, here we go." Yeah, yeah, man. But it, it, but but you know, hey, hey, tomorrow and and it is the deal, guys. They uh, they've already took care of the uh, Jacksonville Jaguars, the third game of the season, and right. and, and that you know, and they uh they you no know, they laid the wood to them down there in Jacksonville. Right now, we realized that was the third game of the season. Here, this is gonna be the. Uh, you know, this would be the 11th ball game of the season, 12th week. That Jacksonville team, that's not the same Jacksonville team I'm expecting to see tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But however, this is not going to be the same Texans team that I expect. Exactly. You know, because when they played back in week three, the, the Texans won a top five offense and number two in passing, which led by Ricky C.J. Stroud. Yeah. You know, I think the, the, the chemistry that this offense has got, this young offense is getting, is going to be unbeaten. Uh, by the Jacksonville Jaguars this season. I think that Houston is going to sweep the Jacksonville Jaguars and take over the South starting this season. Yeah, and we, and, and I and I clearly I stated that if the Texans make set, if they get seven victories, uh, D'Amico Ryan's be coach be should be the coach of the year. I and and, and, I, and I and I and I still stick with that because yeah. you know and, and the questions have been been put to CJ about him being coach of the year. Like and and he's been very candid. He said. That was not my intention to start. The year. I'm not looking to be coach of the year. I'm looking to build this team and just win. He yeah. said, you know, because now, even though he got the assistant coach of the year award last year when he was in San Francisco, when he was the D coordinator, he, mm -hmm. he, he told he told us, he said, and, uh, he told us, he said, yeah, his kids plays with that with that trophy at home, man. He said, I'm just looking to keep building it and, and, and keep, uh, keep uh, grinding and keep building this team toward the, to the next site. It's it is it's really un it's unfathomable that the fact unfathomable that that this team conceivably could be talking about in the going to the playoffs this year. Right. Right. Really? really? Can, you, can you tell us a little bit about uh, Tank Dell? You mentioned Tank back in August. You came on right before the season kicked off and talked about the Houston players to keep an eye out. And Tank Dell, man, my, uh, some of my people took him on their fantasy team, and they're glad they have Tank. Dell oh yeah. Also. In the former Buffalo Bill running back Devin Singletary, who the people in Buffalo said couldn't run with the football, can you talk oh, about oh, what the, oh, uh, about oh. these guys? He, he you talking, play. He talking about well, let me let me go back to Motor. That's what everybody called Devin, uh, Devin. They call him Motor, and okay. and, and, and uh, really Motor for the uh, for the most part, but because uh, it, Motor has really sort of been able to flow with this new offensive line scheme and really and you remember I mentioned earlier that we have not had the starting five that has been projected he's been able to fit into this scheme the, the, they're blocking because it's, it's changed a little bit changed from last year so he he's, he's been able to make that cut make that that backside cut because if you notice that the way they the way that is sort of that is it's sort of a semi uh zone blocking scheme but he's been able to play, jump in there and take that offside cut, and he's been and he he's been killing it, man. And and oh, yeah. the thing the thing about it is this that this line, whichever five is out there, and I, I and like I said, it, it's really just this five with a new center again. And with about two weeks ago, they it, you know it, it's been next man up, and they just been when they need need to uh, pick up pick up a, a first down, uh, but they've been trying they've been keeping a clean pocket with C.J. Stroud. And CJ, to his credit, you know, you you don't catch him. You not you're not catching him doing like on on certain blitzes. Then the, whatever he's seen when he messes up stuff. I mean, he has a memory. He has a photo photographic uh, memory, and things that he's seen that he made mistakes on. You don't see him commit that same mistake again, guys. I mean, it's it's just been amazing. As far as Hank Dale is concerned, 
everybody, Tank Dell was considered one of the lead receivers coming out of the University of Houston. Now, mm-hmm. Tank Dell, Tank Dell is not over. He's not even six feet tall. He probably weighs about a, a probably about a hundred and, and maybe a hundred and fifty pounds wet. Wow! But he wow. is one tough, and he will go over the middle. He will he 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 will, he will climb. You know, for and and the one thing that I'm waiting for Tank to do mm-hmm. is to break one on a on a punt return. That's mm-hmm. the one. That's the one thing I'm really waiting for Tank to do. Because as far as being a receiver and being able to get, in particular on those seam routes, Tank can separate. I mean, it, he, he he can separate real good on the seam route. So I am just he's it, it, been. I mean, these guys have been been a joy to cover, man. They have really been a joy to cover because. That was no expectations or low expectations, right. and 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 then when you turn around and and but though as far as they're concerned, mm-hmm. they expected to be where they are. They really do. They really, really do expect to be where they are. So, but for us to that, that you know, the scene, seen bad times and everything else. Yeah, this has been a, this has been a different this, surprise. They thought Devin Singletary couldn't run with the ball. We, we, me and the mighty over Patrick Freeman always said they didn't get, they never gave him the ball enough times. So I'm so happy to see him having such a great season and proving these critics wrong from Western New York. I mean, he's getting the ball more than 20 times a game, and he's, and he, I mean, he had 185 yards, 150 yard game. I mean, this guy. Yards, up, yeah, he had 150 yards last. It was 150 yards last week. Uh, yeah, in, in Cincinnati, man. I mean, so yeah. I mean, and and what I think it was 20, 22 carries last weekend with one hundred and fifty yards, man. So yeah, that's been the problem with the Buffalo uh, coordinator. That's why I asked you about your coordinator because they need to be in Buffalo. Uh, Joe Brady, the f- first week now, he did run the ball more than twenty times with the with the running backs, uh, almost twenty some, almost thirty times combined with the two quarterbacks. He's running the ball. That's what you gotta have. But Josh Allen, you gotta run the football. To make things that make it a lot easier for Allen. If the Bills run the ball, no matter who they play in the rest of the way, starting with the Eagles, continuing with the Eagles uh, on tomorrow afternoon, you got to run the football. And on your defense, your defense is coming along. Uh, hey, you got with your strength of schedule, you should have some teams that you should be able to beat in these last five or six games to, to get you a playoff spot, right, AD? Yeah, I, I anticipate that, man. With, with this defense, man, uh, you know, you got Will Anderson. One of the, the the second pick, the third pick overall in the draft, and, and, and you know Will Will has finally got he got picked up, got his sack last week, and uh, no, I think his third sack last week. But he he's been crushing the pocket. You know you got Malik Collins, you got uh, 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 the uh, uh, I'm having my, oh, my, you, got, you got my favorite Sheldon, player, my favorite Sheldon, player, Sheldon Sheldon Rank Sheldon Rankin. Sheldon Rankins. Sheldon, the last, I, I, I guess the last three weeks and really the two weeks prior to the Cardinals game, Sheldon has been having, he has been wreaking havoc in that in that defensive line, man. I mean, I mean the prior week, like what he had, three three sacks the, the prior week, man. So, you know, Sheldon, and, and, and I saw, you know, I mentioned and I probably and probably that was one of the interviews I had out on on, the, on my Ad Max corner on the show, one of the recaps, because of the fact that you know this past week and and uh, you know I mentioned to Sheldon I said that you know uh, I said folks had finally started recognizing that you in that in that line and he and he just sort of he had this sort of this matter of fact uh, attitude say yeah well you know they they shifted the line the the, the blocking schemes more toward him opening up for Malik Cottles and. Uh, you know Jonathan Grenard and and so those guys, man. So it's it's been a, and then Jerry Hughes. I'm gonna tell you something. We you know thank y'all Western New York for Jerry Hughes too, <laughs> yes. because Jerry, Jerry, you know is is being able to be spotted. You know he's getting his spotted time, but Jerry uh-huh. is basically almost becoming a you know a, a, a third down pass specialist, man. When they when they really trying to get after it, and so hey man, you really. You really, for you know, thank you, Wesson, again for for Jerry, because Jerry's down here. Jerry's like a, a a new a new spring player down here, man. Wow, wow, we're glad to have. Uh, hey, I'm glad, I'm so happy for Jerry Hughes because he played so long with the Bills, had an illustrious career with the Bills, and I'm glad he's still finding a way to be uh, useful and be helpful on a team on a playoff looking team right now, a very young team, Houston Texans. 
Uh, so definitely, uh, before you go, AD, how can people get in contact with you or follow you? Uh, follow me. Follow you. How do you okay. follow you? Okay. Uh, yeah. All right. Here, here, here is my, all right. Uh, AD underscore more 64 on X, Twitter, or whatever, whatever Elon Musk is calling it this time. Formerly X, formerly Twitter, now X. You can, it's the Ad Max Corner on YouTube. You can, I'm on, on, uh, face, on Facebook and also on Instagram. It's the uh, Ad Max Corner. So th those are some of the social media spots that, that are uh, doing the game and post game that you can find me on, George. But, and uh, really, I appreciate it, bro.